Hello there, welcome back to another podcast, and it's time for podcast number six. Yes, you heard that right, it is number six already, so it's over a month uh, now since we started doing this, and we've had great fun so far. So to kick this one off, um, myself and Chris, yes, Chris is here by the way. Hello. Um, we just both did a week of work experience during our reading week instead of um, doing nothing, which was um, good. I went to uh, talk sport and had a very, very informative week there, um, learning a lot, uh, doing some practical stuff, doing some more basic stuff. But um, yeah, I've done a bit of a write-up of that on my um, personal blog, so I'll link that in the description um, if you want to find out a bit more about how I got on. And Chris, how was the Telegraph? Yeah, the Telegraph was great. Managed to... Uh uh, get my graphics published in the main sports paper. Um, managed to interview people like Ian Rush and other Olympic champions, which was quite interesting. Um, had to get short 50 word messages from the famous sports personalities for the rugby players ahead of the uh, World Cup final last Saturday. Good stuff. Uh, today's podcast uh, is going to feature uh, most of the stuff that we normally talk about. So we've got a bit of Premier League and Championship fantasy football in there too. Uh, a bit about the Carabao Cup that took place this week. Uh, some amazing games to talk about there. Mm. And with our other sports, we've got England's 2020 series against New Zealand. That kicked off uh, the other day and there's another, another, another three of those games coming up. Um, a bit of the World Series of Darts. There's pretty much a darts tournament on every week now, so um, it's darts heaven for people who love watching it, like myself. And then we will be talking about the Rugby World Cup final as well. Um, that might be a bit painful to do that. And then, of course, the preview section will be towards uh, the end of the podcast. So starting off then, um, Everton against Tottenham, Chris. Um, a game perhaps overshadowed by um, yeah, the events um, towards the end, but... Yep. Um, what did you make of it? Um, it? It felt like an average game. It felt like a mid-table uh, game from two teams who, uh, you know, Tottenham uh, managing to get into the Champions League final just, you know, over four months ago. Everton striving for uh, European uh, European um, competitions. Uh, but it felt like an average game, like a mid-table clash. The game was boring, especially the first half. Not much was happening. Um and then uh, Deli Ali uh, scoring on 63 uh, minutes. Uh, but as you said, the game was overshadowed by Andre Gomez's injury uh, on 79 minutes when um, uh, Son decided to tackle him, uh, knowing that he would not win the ball. Now, I'm not saying it's his fault because it, it isn't, it isn't uh, those things happen, uh, but it's just terrible for a player. Um, to be out for so long, he's going to be out probably for the rest of the season or so. Um, VAR didn't step in as well. <laughs> a lot of controversy with VAR uh, over the weekend. Uh, again. Again. Uh, Son got a red card for, as the Premier League stated, endangering the player. Not for the tackle itself, endangering the health of the player. And the VAR failed to step in because that tackle was never a red card. It was a yellow, but it wasn't a red card. Um, obviously, as we saw from the scenes uh, during the game, Son was absolutely distraught. Everyone was in tears. Uh, players were praying on the field. Um, a very nice gesture from Seamus Coleman, the Everton captain, who went into Tottenham's dressing room after the game to console uh, Sonny, telling him that it wasn't his fault and that it, this, is, this is football and things like that happen. Yes, um, yeah, best wishes. Um, to Andre Gomez and uh, Son as well, hoping that uh, that doesn't um, get him down too much. Um, Norwich, uh, sigh, yes, uh, another defeat, another defeat away from home. Um, this time we lost away to Brighton, Hove Albion, um, 2 0. Brighton in a good bit of form at the moment. Um, but as for Norwich, I mean, I can't really fathom it to be honest. We scored so many goals last season, but this season we've only scored one goal away from home and that was on the opening night of the season um, away to Liverpool and to be fair we haven't really looked like scoring either you know, mm. there's a difference between when you create lots of chances and you're just not taking them compared to when you're creating a lot you know not creating anything at all and yeah. you know we're facing I think 20 plus shots each game now mm. like on um, away from home and yeah it's really worrying because we do need to pick up points you know, on the road, you can't rely on home form to solely keep us in the division. 
Um, but yeah, we just need a spark really from somewhere. And I'll get towards that in the preview section as the game we've got next um, is against um, Watford, which we're going to, well, we look at that as a, a must win really, even at mm. this stage of the season. Uh, the rest of the Premier League, um, Man United come crashing down back to earth after two yep. away wins, um, a defeat away to Bournemouth. Uh, Liverpool leave it late again. Um, they beat Villa 2-1. And Chris, you know, can Liverpool keep this up? Can they keep you know, keep nicking these games late on? Um, I think so. Uh, as, as I said before, I think this looks like Liverpool's year. They've uh, Well, we'll see next week. A mm. uh, huge game on uh, Sunday. Uh, against Manchester City, Liverpool at home. So I'm expecting them to win. But yes. then again, this game could be the defining moment of Liverpool's season. If they if they win it, they're going to know that they can, yeah. they can beat anyone and they can just you know keep playing like they're playing and nick those games, win points. If they lose, it's still going to be ahead, but there'll be a you know their mentality mm. might get affected by that. So huge game on Sunday. Uh, Sheffield United uh, easy home win against uh, Burnley and mm. Chelsea have uh, Chelsea have been impressing I think lately. To yeah. be honest, um, Frank Lampard seems to have um, settled in there quite well, don't you think? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, you know, the, the, they only lost uh, to Man United and that was in the EFL Cup. Other than that, um, since their Liverpool game in uh, at the end of September, they've won every single game except for the United one in the EFL Cup. Mm-hmm. And they beat Ajax away in the Champions League uh, yes. group stage games as well. So doing pretty well, uh, sitting comfortably in fourth in the Premier League, um, five points, uh, six points ahead of Arsenal in fifth. Yes, good stuff from Chelsea. Um, fantasy football this week. Um, I was first in my division Ooh, l- last week, but I've now slipped down to fifth. It's very tight. <laughs> um, I just got uh, 41 points. My captain, Raheem Sterling, um, didn't fire at all. Mm. Uh, and I had two players that didn't even play, so um, that didn't help either. My three defenders got 18 of my 41 points, so Impressive. that kind of saved me. But, yeah, down to fifth and I'm about 20 points off the top now. So um, work to be done. Yeah, no, I I got 41 points as well. Um, Mane getting 12 of them and uh, Madison from Leicester getting nine. Sterling, also my captain, only managed two points. Um, when it comes to defenders, only four points coming from the uh, the back three for me. The championship then this week is still one more game to go in that Stoke playing West Brom tonight. Um, Preston, though, they went top of the league yes, they did. Um, after beating Charlton. There was, do you see um, the story? There was some speculation in the build up that um, manager Alex Neal um, might be going to Stoke. Um, mm. um, there's something reported, but um, Neil said in his uh, interview that he's focused on Preston. Um, but um, for now, one can only assume. I also um, don't see why he'd want to go to Stoke. Stoke, as we know, in deep trouble, sitting in 24th with eight points in the championship at the moment. Yes, on that, um, what do you think does cause a manager to sometimes just make those sudden decisions to you know, to leave a club and go to another? Do you think it's purely about money or are there other I'd, interests? I think it's not always money. Obviously, that affects the decision a lot as well. But I think it's also the the depth and the possibilities that the manager could have of the new club. So if, for example, they know that the club can develop, maybe they're in trouble right now, but there's you know scope for development quickly. Possibly there's there's investment from the from the chairman, from from the board and stuff. If he's going to have more support, more you know more trust put in him, you know if if he's going to be allowed to do whatever he wants to do with the with the squad and the club, that could also affect him. But um, yeah, mostly money and scope for development, I'd say. Okay. Um, other results, um, Swansea, a win for them, Leeds, a win for them. Both of those teams joint top with uh, Preston. Um, Fulham losing at home to Hull, 3-0. Mm. It's one of the shocks of the yeah. weekend for me. And uh, the table is still mightily close, which is yeah, amazing for a neutral. And um, <laughs> yeah, Chris, tell, us, tell, us, tell me more about that. Um, so, yeah, Preston sitting in first at the moment with 28 points. And if we go down to... Even 12th, which is Birmingham at the moment, 22 points. So it's only six points separating number one and number 12 in the league Mm. uh, table. Now, at the bottom of the table, looks uh, a bit different. Uh, We have Stoke in 24th with eight points. Then Barnsley with nine in 23rd. And then Middlesbrough Middlesbrough with uh, 12 uh, points. So Stoke and Barnsley, they need to pick their game up because uh, it could be hard catching up afterwards. 
Very good. Um, moving on to the uh, Carabao Cup this week. Um, the last 16, um, some amazing results mm -hmm. in there. Uh, Manchester United beating Chelsea away from home. What a goal from Rashford, um, I have to say. <sighs> Absolutely stellar. And then probably the game of the of the round at Liverpool 5, Arsenal, Arsenal five. 5. Both teams making, I think, 11 changes it was. Liverpool won that game on penalties. And, um, yeah, did, did you did you catch any of that game? Yeah, I, I, did, I did watch the game. Uh, yeah, it, it was just goals, goals and goals. Uh, plenty of mistakes, but those mistakes led to goals. So, uh, for a neutral, definitely a very exciting and entertaining game. Uh, for Liverpool and Arsenal fans, not so much. They'll be asking a lot of questions about... Uh, their defence um, yeah as you said uh, Liverpool uh, winning on penalties after Danny Ceballos missed the fourth penalty for Arsenal the quarter final draw is as follows uh, Oxford at home to Manchester City what a game that is for them yes yeah but, and I mean the TV money I think especially yeah. for these smaller clubs is um, huge uh, Everton against Leicester um, Man United against Colchester once and again Villa against Liverpool but all of the big teams avoiding each other there yeah um, interesting. So yeah, I'll ask you. Um, chances of a shock from Colchester or Oxford's point of view? Colchester. Uh, there was, I'm sure many of you have seen videos on on social media of Colchester players celebrating during mm. uh, Manchester United uh, in the quarterfinal. Um, huge game for them. They're, they're going to travel to uh, Old Trafford. Um, yeah, you know, you know what, you know what could be. Who knows? Uh, I'm I'm hoping that. Um, one of the uh, one of the smaller teams uh, will go through to the semi-finals and who knows possibly the final. Moving on to some of our um, other sports, I'll start with a bit of a cricket update for this week. Uh, England's T20 tour against New Zealand has got underway. We've had one win and one defeat so far from those first two matches. Uh, England won the first 2020 by seven wickets, chasing down 154. James Vince impressed with the bat, scoring 59, while Pat Brown uh, claimed his first international wicket with the ball. Uh, England playing lots of new players, lots of younger players in this series, which is uh, especially what I like to see. Um, however, New Zealand levelled the series yesterday um, with a 21-run victory in Wellington. Uh, New Zealand batted first and scored 176 for eight, thanks to contributions from Jimmy Neesham and Martin Guptill. And they proceeded to bowl England out for 153 uh, Dawood Milan, who's just gone to Yorkshire today from Middlesex, saw that story pop up this morning. Um, he made runs for England, and Chris Jordan took three for 23 and made runs, but um, those were the only highlights, as only four other batsmen made double figures, and uh, yes, Owen Morgan's team ran out of steam in their innings. Uh, in terms of Australia, they beat Sri Lanka 3-0 in their T20 series, and the first T20 against Pakistan was washed out, and they've got another one um, tomorrow morning, 10 past 8 um, yes, on, on what I was talking about there, about um, playing sort of youngsters and inexperienced players, in terms of any sport, you know, how important is it for, you know, youngsters and you know, people who haven't played, you know, to get some game time, mm. you know, especially in these kind of mm. smaller kind mm -hmm. of matches. So in terms of football, you might say like the cup games. You, mm. you know. Yeah, there's, um, especially in the Premier League, there, there's a routine. So the, the, the younger players tend to get loaned out to uh, smaller teams. So, you know, they get playing time. Um but yeah, even from uh, you know me supporting Tottenham, I know how important young players are for any football club. Uh, Harry Kane, Harry Wings, they've all they, the, you know both of them have come through uh, through the academy as well. And um, last year when I uh, interviewed Mickey Hazard for one of uh, my assignments, we spoke about how different is it? How how different the connection between a player and a football club is when he's gone through the academy, when he's got the football club written, literally written on his heart, sort of you know tattooed on his heart. How different? How how different the emotion is? And and you know we said that um, the players, you know, are willing to give everything for the football football club. Just like Harry Kane says, he he'd love to stay at Tottenham for the rest of his career because he loves the club. He's not he's not in the game for money. He's in it for the club. Um, so I think it's really important. Um, and maybe we, we, we're losing that a bit nowadays with, you know, huge transfers. Managers tend to um, tend to be willing to spend, you know, huge sums of money to get, you know, foreign players in instead of investing into the, the younger talent that we've got here. Uh, an example would be Phil Foden from, uh, from Manchester City, a fantastic football player, uh, but he's still being omitted because of the uh, of the huge names that Pep Guardiola has chosen over him. Um, but I think... 
is very important because the, the emotion, the uh, everything is different. The, 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 the players are willing to sacrifice everything on the pitch uh, for the football club. Yes, um, training and uh, the real game are two very, very different mm. situations in terms of pretty much all aspects, yeah. you know, physically um, and mentally too. Uh, the World Series of Darts, um, yes, the darts competition is pretty much every weekend now. Um, this one came from um, came from the Netherlands and it was uh, Michael Van Gogh and yes, he was the winner <laughs> again. Uh, he bounced back from his first round exit last week um, and he won the Jacks Casino World Series of Darts finals beating fellow Dutchman at Danny Noppert 11-2 in the final to take the crown. Um, with all of these competitions going on at the moment, um, there's, a norm, there's an enormous amount of uh, travelling for all these players. Mm. Um, so, sort of, Chris, I'll just ask you how you know how do they sort of you know, keep their head in the game and yeah. you know sort of not get too much fatigue? Mm. Um, you know, how does Michael Van Gogh do it? Because he's yeah. travelling to event to event to event, but he can still perform that you know that same standard um, every time. Yeah, I'm, sh- I'm sure um, th- you know some sort of you know possibly mental. Uh, you know, training, mental coaching, mind coaching, something like that definitely comes in because to keep in that frame frame of mind, to keep their concentration, it, it must be really difficult when you've got, you know, it's not only travelling, but you've got so many other distractions. You've got, you know, everything going on. You've got TV, you've got interviews, everything. But yeah, travelling seems to be the main one. Um, you know, uh, it definitely affects them. But um, but I think, I'm, you know, they've developed some kind of ways to, to deal with it, especially... Michael Vargo, one of so much experience that he's got. He's been, you know, on the biggest stage for so long now, and I'm sure he's got uh, some, you know, ways of coping with, with with the stress and the and the traveling. He's got his own routines, techniques, maybe little things that he does to sort of keep him focused or t- or take his mind off off of things uh, at some some moments. Now, the Rugby World Cup final. Um, did you <sighs> did you watch it? I did watch it. <laughs> yes, England Unfortunately. twelve. South Africa at 32. Um, yes, they they crushed our hopes of a first mm. Rugby World Cup since 2003. That was Saturday morning in Yokohama, Japan. Uh, the Springboks, it's safe to say, had control from the very yeah. first minute, I think. Yeah. Their physical approach was simply too hot to handle mm. for England. And uh, we did have the chance, though, in the second half to go within yeah, three points, but uh, Owen Farrell could not convert. And then that sucker punch came with just under 20 minutes to go. Um, South Africa scored a try. It was a good try as well, to be honest. Mm. And then another try uh, a few minutes later, which uh, sealed the victory and yeah, broke English hearts really after what was a faultless tournament really yeah, from w- um, Eddie Jones's men. So you know, what was your assessment? Uh, mm. What what went wrong in the final? Yeah, what what I can say is what won it for South Africa was their defence. Their their defence was immaculate, and we, we we saw it in the in the semi final against Wales. That's what won them the game as well. Um, for us also we made too many mistakes our passing mm. uh was just we, we didn't turn up and um you know even at half time we knew how difficult it was because trailing by 6 points to 12 i think it was at half time um we we would have to make history to come back and win it because no other team has ever come back trailing at half time to win uh, a rugby world cup we knew it was going to be difficult but we still believed um, now, as you said, second half, we did have a chance. Uh, we didn't take it, and South Africa punished us. Uh, I thought it was going to be a trialless game, uh, mm. but, um, yeah, th- that sucker punch, which came, uh, as you said, with 20 minutes to go. It was it was a mix of South Africa defending brilliantly uh, and us uh, making simply too many uh, mistakes. Yeah, their physicality just mm. was too much for us, and I just think they forced us into a lot of, a lot of, a lot of errors yeah. and... You know, got a few points ahead. They were making us chase the game constantly. So when you're chasing the game, you're likely to make um, mm. make mistakes as well. And um, they probably felt the victory was um, was quite comfortable. But um, still, an excellent campaign from England to to get to the final. Yeah, definitely. And um, you know, almost, but uh, not quite. Now then, our preview section. Uh, just quickly on the Premier League. Uh, as I said, Norwich home to Watford next Friday is on TV. And yes, at this stage, it's pretty much a must-win game already. Mm. Otherwise, you know, I can't see where we're going to be picking up points because um, you know we've got to win these home games, especially against the teams who are struggling. And Watford haven't won a game yet this season either, which kind of worries me. Yeah. Cause I'm like, we don't want to be the first team to <laughs> lose to them. And yes, we desperately need three points in that one. And 
Sheffield United at home, Chris. Um, yeah. Not an easy game. No, it'll be, it'll be very difficult. Uh, Sheffield at the moment sitting in sixth place in the Premier League with 16 points. That is three points ahead of Spurs. Uh, it'll be, I think it will be a very tough game. Uh, now, at home, we can turn up, but we also may not. We shall find out on Saturday mm. afternoon, 3 o'clock. The Champions League, more importantly, then an away game this week on Wednesday. Yeah, uh, we've got Olympia, uh, Red Star, sorry, Red Star Belgrade uh, away. Um, the thing that worries me the most is obviously uh, playing, away in playing away in Europe, number one. So that's a lot of travelling. Uh, but most importantly, travelling to uh, Serbia. Uh, we know what kind of atmosphere there's going to be at the stadium. You know, mm. there's going to be flares, there's going to be, it's going to be noisy, there's going to be. So that could. Uh, definitely affect uh, the players it will be difficult we beat them 5-0 at home uh, two weeks ago um, it will be it will definitely be an interesting one but uh, I think if we get away with a draw uh, I'll, I, will, I will take that yes other Champions League games this week uh, Liverpool at home to uh, Genk Chelsea at home to Ajax both of those games hmm. on Tuesday and then Manchester City away to um, Atalanta on the Wednesday. So far, it's looking as if um, there is a good chance of all four English teams are qualifying yeah. um, for the uh, knockout stages. At least it's still in their hands um, anyway at the moment. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens um, this week. Um, England against New Zealand as well. Uh, the next game of that is tomorrow morning, 1am in Nelson. So I might stay up and watch that. I might not. Probably won't. Um, and then Australia against Pakistan tomorrow, 8, 10 a.m., uh, coming from Canberra. So a bit more um, watchable for me. And we've got another darts tournament, uh, the Grand Slam of Darts, which includes players from both the BDO and the PDC. So good to mix the two, and it's a good opportunity for those BDO players. That's coming up uh, this week. And that is a wrap for a, another week. Uh, plenty discussed um, today and yes what we're sort of trying to do at the moment is um, talk generally about our teams but then also try and add uh, questions add things that we can debate in there um, so yeah, for example we talked about um, what causing a manager to leave a sudden suddenly leave a club and then managing another so we're trying to add as many of those things in there um, each week as possible but um, other than that uh, we've both learned a lot the last mm -hmm. week I think um, so yeah we're happy with where we are at the moment and um, Yes, yeah, so we just had shorthand, didn't we? How was that? Uh, yeah, shorthand is getting serious. Now, we had the reading week and I didn't get a chance to practice much. Um, so, uh, a lot to catch up on. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Very interesting to see how we, how we develop over the next uh, few weeks up until Christmas. Yes, we'll keep you updated with that. Uh, in the meantime, um, if you want to check out the past podcasts, check the link for the playlist in the description. You can also listen on SoundCloud. Um, hope you've been enjoying these. Thank you very much for listening. And we will catch you at the same time next week. Goodbye.